welcome to the video. I'm here to tell you about a brand new product that Astranti are bringing to the market. And it is what we're going to call objective test videos. So in this video, I'm gonna introduce you to this product, tell you what it is, why you want to know about it, and how it can be of use to you in your studies. So what is a objective test video? Well, Basically, it's going to be a set, or it is a set of 100 exam style questions that we've produced at Astranti. And what we've done is we've made a five to 10 minute long video for every single question, for all 100 questions, explaining exactly how to answer the question, okay? So it's a full debrief. We go through the particular syllabus reference, so how it relates the question specifically to the syllabus, the indicative syllabus content that it is covering. And then we talk about exactly how to answer the question. So how to apply the knowledge that you have learnt in your studies to actually answering exam questions. We give you tips and advice, approaches for answering questions and the different types of questions that you might get and the different approaches you may need to take to that. So as I say, it's 100 questions for the entire set and it's broken down into chapters so you can use this alongside the study text or the tuition videos because the chapters are consistent across all the different products okay and as i've already mentioned it's based on the representative task statement so when you're studying for this exam all of the content that we provide is based on the SEMA syllabus and we're just showing you and assuring you that every single question that we look at relates directly to the SEMA syllabus and in some way helps you in preparing that aspect of the syllabus and ultimately preparing for your exam. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, my experience writing these questions and dealing with F1 questions over the past few years that I've been working at Astranti. So these are some tips, my top three tips for uh, approaching F1 questions and this these will come through this will come through in the videos uh, as you work your way through them so first of all you really need to know how to apply how to apply international financial reporting standards okay so a major part of F1 is knowing about the relevant accounting standards and how to apply the provisions that are set out in those standards so whether it's you know, the uh, IAS 16 on property, plant and equipment, whether it's financial reporting standards for the preparation of financial statements, whether it's IFRS 16 on leases, you need to know, you need to be comfortable applying the provisions of those standards in these questions, because a lot of questions will expect you to be able to do that. And they'll be examining specifically certain international financial reporting standards and IASs. Secondly, Obviously, double entry is a big part of this exam. When you look through the syllabus on this exam, sure, there'll be calculations, and I'll talk about that in a second, but actually, there's more than just calculations. It's one thing to get the numbers right, but as you'll know, the really important thing is to get your double entry right. If you're mixing up your debits and your credits, or you're making entries into the wrong accounts, or you're not sure where certain transactions need to be recorded, then you've got a problem because that's what they want you to be able to do in this exam. So make sure you've learned your dead click, your debits from your credits, and you know how to treat different transactions. Okay, and of course, there will be calculations, lots of them in this exam. It's financial reporting. After all, you will be doing calculations. And that goes across pretty much the entire syllabus. So in working capital, there are calculations there relating to inventory management, EOQ, for example, um, how to manage your receivables and payables, ratio analysis, short term investment opportunities. There are calculations to be done there to see what cash you have available to uh, to invest with tax. Obviously, tax does the theory and the conceptual sort of ideas behind tax, but there's also ultimately the calculation of tax. And of course, financial reporting, all the different financial reporting standards, they're going to involve numbers most of the time. But remember, as I said, though you are performing calculations, often you 
you calculate a number and then you specify how it should be accounted for. It's going to be a debit to such and such account and a credit to such and such account. Okay, that's enough of me trying to explain to you what these things are like. Why don't I just show you what they're like with an example? So what you can see on the screen is the exam question. Okay, it's well, in this case, we've written a sample question for this video. And this is what you're going to see for our question debrief series, our 100 questions. So at the top, we've got the syllabus reference in blue and bold. Okay, and that's the indicative syllabus content, right? So we read through this and it tells us to apply the recognition and derecognition, initial measurement and subsequent measurement principles of IAS 16 property plant and equipment in the financial statements. So remember my one of my key tips was now how to apply financial, uh, how, sorry, how to apply uh, international financial reporting standards and accounting standards. Well, this question, as we'll see, rela relates directly to this particular accounting standard. So as you'll see, we need to be able to apply the provisions of this particular standard, those being related to recognition, derecognition, initial and subsequent measurement. Okay, so all of the videos are gonna take this kind of approach. So we'll look at the syllabus reference first. Now bear in mind, in the actual exam, obviously you won't have the syllabus reference at the top. This is a feature of our videos because we want to show you what area of the syllabus the question relates to. But obviously in the exam, we won't know until we've read through the question exactly what the topic will be. So once we've gone through the syllabus reference, depending on the question, what we'll actually do more often than not is take a look at the question requirement, what it's actually asking us to do. Because we find that if you use that approach, you've already got some context. You've got a good idea of specifically what it is you need to do to answer this question before your mind is full of all the details, some of it sometimes irrelevant details of the question. So we always recommend looking at the requirement first. So in this case, it's this sentence here, which of the following shows the correct debit entry or entries required to record the equipment in OK Lose financial statements for the year ended 31st of December 20x9. Okay, so we're given some options here, A, B, C or D. One of these is correct and there are a range of debit entries to not different accounts, so either the revaluation reserve or into the statement of profit or loss. So remember my uh, second, was it my second tip or one of my three tips? First one was you need to apply financial reporting standards. The second one was what? You need to know your double entries. And here, of course, you do because the correct answer will entirely depend on you knowing what the relevant entry requirements are for this particular accounting standard. Okay, and of course, all of these have numbers in them. So that brings us on to my third tip. You need to be able to do the calculations. So getting the right answer here, requires us, first of all, to apply the provisions of this standard. Second of all, we need to know our debits from our credits. We need to know our double entry bookkeeping. Third of all, we need to be able to perform a calculation to make sure we get the right answer. So we're gonna bring all that together and show you how it works in this question. So we've looked at the requirement. We're looking for the correct entry required to record the equipment. So we already know that we're dealing with IS 16 property plan and equipment. So we're dealing with non-current assets here, aren't we? So this is our sample question. Okay, Lou, that's the company. They measure their non-current assets using the revaluation model. Okay, key part of IAS 16, the revaluation model used in subsequent measurements. The following information relates to equipment purchased for $345,000, and that was purchased on the 31st of December, 20X7. Okay, so key in, in all these questions, really important to take note of dates. So we have a purchase in X7 on the last day of the year, and we are looking for the entries made into the financial statements for the year ended 31st of December 20 X9. Okay, so we're dealing with uh, three years, X7, or as we'll see, X8 and X9. So the equipment was revalued on the 31st of December 20 X8, so a year after purchase, to $481,000. And then the latest valuation report, which is 31st of December 
S20X9 values the equipment at $307,000. And we're told, crucially, that OKLU has adjusted the equipment shown in non-current assets as at the 31st December 20X9. Okay, and so our requirement, as we know now, is to determine which of these is the correct debit entry or entries to record this revaluation effectively. So there's a few stages to this. And I'll just move down to give myself some space to make some quick notes. So first of all, we need to deal with the purchase in year one. So we've got year one, which is X7. And in X7, we purchased the asset for $345,000. Okay, remember we are looking for the entries, the debit entries made, and there's an entry here either to the revaluation reserve or the statement of profit or loss or both. So we're really focusing on what happens in the revaluation reserve and profit or loss in relation to these revaluations. So if we move on to the next year, X8, we're told that the equipment was revalued in X8 to $481,000. Okay, and that's an increase, isn't it? So compared to the year before, that's increased. So we've got a gain. And the gain is for $136,000, okay? So we've made a gain on revaluation of $136,000. How would that have been recorded at the end of that financial period? So the debit will be to PPE for that amount, increasing the value of the equipment. The credit will be to the revaluation reserve. And we put increases, so we've got a gain on revaluation that Entry is credit revaluation reserve with $136,000. Moving on then to the next year, X9, the year we are looking at in particular, and we find that in X9, the equipment is revalued to 307,000. So there's another drop in value down to $307,000. Okay, and that is a loss compared to the previous year, isn't it? Because we've gone from 481,000 down to 307,000. That's a loss of $174,000, okay? Now, how do we record a loss on revaluation? The debit entry, well, what do we do with the debit entry? Well, if there's an existing amount in the revaluation reserve relating to the equipment, then first of all, we will record the loss against that existing amount in the revaluation reserve. How much is in the revaluation reserve? We've got $136,000 in relation to this equipment in the revaluation reserve. So we're going to debit the revaluation reserve with $136,000 thousand dollars effectively clearing out the revaluation reserve so now there is nothing in there relating to this particular asset but we haven't dealt with a whole loss so we've dealt with hundred thirty six thousand dollars worth of the loss there's still an outstanding amount for the entire loss so what entry do we make there well it's still to debit we aren't even moving on to the credit side because all we need is the debit entry so we still make a debit and it's to the PL and it's for the balance between these two, which is $38,000. Okay, so what's happened there? We've made a loss on revaluation of $174,000. We can cancel some of that against the amount in the revaluation reserve, but there's not enough in the revaluation reserve to absorb all of the loss. So we will have to put some of the loss straight into the PL and that's $38,000 worth. So looking for the correct answer then, it can't be A because that only makes an entry to the revaluation serve, it can't be D because that only makes an entry to the profit and loss for the loss amount, and that would be incorrect because we have that amount in the revaluation reserve to deal with. C is debit revaluation reserve 136,000, that's what we've got here, and debit the profit and loss with 38,000, which is what we have here. So C must be the correct answer, and so we'll circle C.
just to show you that D is also false. It is DR, revaluation reserve, is correct, but it's saying to DR statement of profit and loss with the full loss on revaluation. You wouldn't get your entries balancing if you did that. So that's incorrect. Okay, so there is an example of the uh, question debriefs that we have been doing for this paper. Okay, so that's what we have for you. We have the Astranti F1 objective test videos. Now for F1, F1 is 18 chapters in length. So we've got the 100 questions split through 18 chapters. So there's about what is that? Five to six questions per chapter, and they're all exam style questions modeled on the real life SEMA exam. And they're available now. And you can get them at www.astranti.com. Sign up, create your account, and in fact, you'll get the first three chapters for free you'll get a really good idea of what they're like and how they can help you and will benefit you in your studies. So make sure you check that out on the website, have a look at those three chapters and just have a look for yourselves to see how useful this product can be for you.